Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over the history and geography of Argentina, which I have propped up at this weird angle because Argentina, as you can see, grab my pencil, is a very long country. It takes up most of what's known as the cone of South America. If you think of it like a big ice cream cone, it's shaped like this with like Brazil and Colombia, Venezuela at the top, and the cone would be Chile, Argentina, with a dash of Paraguay and Uruguay there as well. So Argentina is such an interesting country. It's one of those places that has like every kind of climate possible. So let me go through north to south so I can show them to you. But first of all, let me show you the borders. Argentina has this long border with Chile. All down through here too, we'll talk about all that. It has a border with um, Bolivia, there we go, with Paraguay, with Brazil, and Uruguay. Most of these borders are defined by geography. So, as you can see, the Andes Mountains dominates the whole western part of Argentina, the longest mountain range in the world. And right here, we have Mount Aconcagua. There we go. The highest mountain in South America and the highest mountain in the western hemisphere. The Andes is just pockmarked with really tall mountains. It's like not counting the Himalayas, it has the highest mountains, or I should say like Argentina has the highest mountains outside of the Himalayas. Well, the Andes at least, there's some in Chile as well, but anyway, let's not get technical here. The borders over here are defined mostly by rivers. So we can see the Parana River, um, flowing down through here, it's a big river, and the Uruguay River flowing down through here. And we can see this big estuary right here, the Rio de la Plata, it's called. And right here is the capital city of Buenos Aires. Fresh winds, apparently, or nice winds, however you like to translate it. The big capital city, the largest city also in Argentina. We'll talk about it in its history. This northern region up here is part of the Gran Chaco. I talk about it in a lot of detail in my video on Paraguay. But it is um, just kind of like a big, grassy, flat land for the most part. And it's over here, especially in this neat little, um, little almost like a peninsula formed by the rivers here. is very, very rainforesty. Lots of trees, lots of beautiful animals, lots of jungle in a sense. And then right up here, where... Paraguay, Argentina, and Brazil meet is the Iguazu Falls, um, which are these just massive, massive waterfalls, right where these countries meet. Really pretty. I'll show you pictures in this book as well. Um, also for this book, because like I always say, I show you the pictures in here, but I don't really read any of it. So on my Patreon, I will be reading these books. I'll be reading chapters. So um, links are in the description, but whoever joins my $5, $10 tier next can pick out which chapter they want. So wait till I flip through and see which one you guys want to hear, and I'll read that to you exclusively on my Patreon. I'll wait a few days to record it and put it up. Meanwhile, this region here in the middle is known as the Pampas. And the Pampas region is very famous for being very flat and grassy. Um, but what makes it different from the flat and grassy lands up here is that it is very, very fertile. This is pretty much like where most of the farmland in Argentina is for crops. The more south we go, the less suitable it is for crops and the more suitable it is for ranching and herding. So like you can see cows here on the cover and there's a gaucho, which is basically like a South American version of a cowboy. Um, very iconic in this part of the world. The furthest down south we go, we reach a region known as Patagonia. 
and Patagonia, like I said, not very fertile. It is very rocky, and even down here in the middle, it's very deserty, like just straight up like desert. And then we go even further south. You can see all the snow happening here. You can see what's happening. We reach this island chain over here. So very important corner of the world. You can see right here is the Strait of Magellan. This is where when Magellan was circumnavigating the globe, he found a passage to get around South America to get to the Pacific Ocean. And for a long, long time until the Panama Canal was built, um, traveling by ship, like this was the only way you could get to the Pacific Ocean and the west coast of the Americas from the east coast. So very important waterway for a long time. Still used, but not nearly as significant as it used to be. And we have these islands down here, the biggest one being Tierra del Fuego. You can see it right there. This half is part of Chile and this half is part of Argentina. You can see right down here the town of Ushuaia, which is, well, apparently it's debatable, but the southernmost town in the world. And it's a big um, town for people traveling to Antarctica since it's just a hop, skip, and a jump down here. Um, Argentina also owns some parts of uh, Antarctica. I almost said Alaska. Um, Argentina owns some parts of Antarctica, um, some islands, and then parts of the actual landmass. But um, Antarctica isn't technically like owned by anyone. It's just administered by a variety of different countries. You can also see the Beagle Channel down here, very famous for Charles Darwin's ship, the Beagle. And Cape Horn is the term for um, this little corner, this horn-shaped part of South America. We have the Bacor, this little section here on Buenos Aires, but you can see these islands right here are the Falkland Islands. Um, Argentina claims them, but they're administered by Britain, who also very strongly claim them, and we'll talk about what's happening there in its history. Let me just check my notes. Oh, one last thing I didn't mention in its geography. So down here is where we can find full-on glaciers. So I just think it's neat that we can go from like hot, humid rainforest to glaciers. It's so interesting. I love countries like that that just have a bit of everything to it. So let's talk about the history of Argentina. People have been living in Argentina for a very, very long time since the Paleolithic Age. And um, there's actually a really interesting rock art found down here in the south. I'll show you a picture of it in this book, but it's called the Cave of the Hands. And it's remarkable to look at. It's um, literally like people put their hands on the cave walls and then like blew some, I guess, um, like tinted dust or something to make paint um, like through a tube so there's an outline of their hand you know when you take it away kind of like spray paint today I suppose but the rock is just covered in all of these handprints and it's I don't know there's something about it just thinking that these people made this rock art and maybe it had some significant meaning that's lost forever and no, just like a, a connection, like a we were here kind of thing always really gets me. Like if you know me, you know I'm a sucker for ancient um, like artifact sites and stone circles and just ancient art like that. The Cave of the Hands was created sometime um, between 13,000 and 9,000 years ago. I just noticed you can see all my electronic doodads over here. Let me just... You don't need to see all my little dongles and stuff, but anyway. Um, there were many, many different ethnic groups scattered all throughout Argentina. Um, way too many to name in this video. Like um, I said, well, like I say in all my videos, this is going to be a brief history of Argentina. So I'm not going to get into a lot of the nitty gritty details. But um, like I said, there were many different groups of people living throughout what is now Argentina. A lot of them were farmers and made their own pottery, so advanced, but not like 
not like their neighbors, the Incas up there, advanced, basically. The first European to arrive in what is now Argentina was in 1502, and it was Amerigo Vespucci. In 1516, a very important explorer named Juan Diaz de Solis discovered this estuary over here, where he was also murdered by the native peoples who lived there. In 1526, an English explorer named Sebastian Cabot named this area Rio de la Plata. And Plata is Spanish for silver because um, I guess people just assumed that this area would be full of silver, which it is not. But it just had that reputation. And um, Argentina comes from the Latin word argentum, which means silver. Um, but yeah, it had that name and it stuck for a long, long time. In 1536, an explorer named Pedro de Mendoza founded the little settlement of Buenos Aires, but it was abandoned in 1541 after it was attacked by the local peoples who did not want them there, but eventually re-established, as you can tell. Um, Skipping ahead, the Spanish Empire, once it had a firm grasp on the area after, you know, conquests and missions and um, setting up towns and cities and ports, um, they created the Viceroyalty of Rio de la Plata in 1776. It was basically, um, in Argentina's terms, it was like this chunk, but also with lots of like Paraguay. Uruguay, some of Chile. Um, it was just like this chunk of South America down here. Buenos Aires was the capital of the Viceroyalty, but after um, Napoleon went and ruined a lot of plans for Europe at this time in the early 1800s, and the Age of Enlightenment was just starting to blossom, the people of Argentina, or Rio de la Plata, whatever, um, was seeking independence, and in the year 1810, the May Revolution occurred, which was one of the first big moments that led to the War of Independence against Spain. Um, Argentina was declared independent on July 9th, 1816, and um, it's important to note that the revolutionaries split into two different factions. They were the Centralists and the Federalists. The centralists wanted just like one big country with like a strong leader controlling all of it. And the federalists wanted it um, broken up into different like departments. And the central government would just kind of hold them all together while they all made their own decisions. Um, and the two groups eventually launched a whole civil war. Um, because at first, um, Argentina had basically what was like a dictator starting off the country. In 1826, they replaced that with a president. Um, but in 1831, basically the centralists won the civil war in a way and created, um, like a centralist government, which was eventually replaced by a federal constitutional government in 1853. It was a big back and forth for a long time. If you're wondering now, Argentina is broken up into different departments and what have you. But anyway, there is a lot of wars in between this era. We won't get into the details. There is warring against the different political factions. There was war against pretty much every country around here except Uruguay. Um, there were embargoes that European countries imposed on them. There, it was just a lot. Um, or blockades, I should say. Not embargoes. Um, but eventually, in 1861, the government was overthrown and started fresh. And that led to a massive economic boom. It was like the first time that the country was really truly stable and not at war, and the economy just flourished. And, um, there's Rooster, he's letting us know about the Argentine economy in the um, early 1900s. Anyway, that economic boom created a massive wave of immigrants to move from Europe to Argentina, in particular from Italy. 
um, but from you know all all over Europe basically they went to Argentina and to this day the population is like 95% European like it was that big of an influx of immigrants like on par with what was happening in the United States up north at the time it was also during this time that the government sought to expand Argentina um, between 1878 and 1884, there was a big conquest of the Pampas region, the Patagonia region, and the Gran Chaco region. Basically to expand Argentina more to what the borders look like today. Um, in 1930, it was a turbulent year for the world. Um, there was another coup led by José Félix Uriburu. And it was really like that point that ended that economic boom and started a big downturn, which Argentina is still recovering from today. Um, as Uriburu's government was starting to gain somewhat power after World War II, um, Argentina remained neutral during World War I, and it remained neutral for most of World War II. Um, they joined, they literally joined like the month before the war in Europe ended. But, um, there was a military figure named Juan Domingo Perón, who, um, in 1945, um, rose to power and the government really saw him as a threat. So they like downgraded him and jailed him. And, um, he was really a threat because he was, um, like working for the, the unions and the working class of Argentina. So, um, those people protested and had him released. And in the next election in 1946, he was elected president, started like a new era in Argentina. He really, really worked for the rights of workers and the lower class, um, but was very discriminatory toward the more upper class, um, especially if they disagreed with him. So, um, just like any world leader, there was good and there was bad. It was just that his administration, um, was just a big, big, like, like he focused on things that other leaders of Argentina hadn't focused on before. Um, however, in the 1950s, Argentina started to suffer a big economic decline and, um, Perón started to become less and less popular during that time, which really culminated on a attack on uh, Peron supporters who were gathering um, to support him and the military bombed them. This was in 1955. Um, a very devastating event. It led to Peron being deposed and he fled to exile in Spain. Skipping a bunch. Um, a couple decades later, in 1973, the president, um, because you know how political parties are, when you have a strong leader from one party, you wind up with the next leader being strong from the other party, and then eventually the tides change and go back. So by then, the political scene had swifted, shifted back to a more Peronist, or like a pro-Peronist stance, and, um, but the economy was still doing really well. Um, the president at the time resigned, um, just as Perón returned from Spain, so he ran for re-election and won. And um, his wife at the time, Isabel Perón, uh, was his vice president. So when Perón died of a heart attack the following year, 1974, she became the president. And she was actually the first woman president of any nation in the world, which is really cool. But her time as president is considered like one of the biggest failures in Argentine political history. She, it was like devastating. She was removed from office in 1976. And then, um, 1976 was the start of a very bad period in Argentina. It's known as the Dirty War. And the government basically, um, ran like a state terrorism, um, response. And like I say on my channel, when we talk about very awful, stressful, horrible things. I just go over it gently so as not to stress you out because this is a relaxation channel and you know, we do remember the victims of this event, but we're just going to touch on it gently and not go into detail. I'll just say that there were a group of people known as the disappeared because the government disappeared them. Like tens of thousands of people, many people lost their lives, um, so on and so forth. 
it was a very, very dark time in Argentina. So, um, in the early 1980s, when the, the government was getting so bad that people were just getting fed up, they decided, the, they, the government decided to invade the Falkland Islands, which is the little islands I showed you over here. So, Argentina still claims to this day that those islands were given to them by Spain after the War of Independence. Britain claims that they um, colonized it and have been controlling it all this time. So, Argentina, I suppose in a move that was like, enough is enough, let's get these islands back, we don't want any European influence, and um, probably also in a way to make themselves look like they're doing something for the people, they invaded the Falkland Islands in 1982, and it was a huge disaster because um, Britain came down with all of their armed forces against the Argentine military because there were British people living there. You know, they were protecting their citizens. And um, they wiped the floor with the Argentinians there in the Falkland Islands. So um, that basically led to the end of that whole era of the Dirty War. The government was just thrown out and started fresh with democracy. Um, which started off really good, but an economic decline started again in the mid-1990s until about 2002. There were lots of protests and things about it at the time. Um, that ended with the election of the president, Nestor Kirchner. Um, he ran with his wife, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, who in the next election, she was elected president. And um, they really got the ball rolling on um, turning the economy in a positive direction, which it's been going in pretty much ever since. Uh, the latest election was in December 2019 with President Alberto Fernandez. And Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner is the vice president now. Um, but they entered office in December 2019, which was also a very perilous time for the world. So, um, because of COVID and everything that happened in 2020, we'll see um, what lies ahead for Argentina. But um, it really seems like their history economically really goes up and down so it really looks like it's heading toward more of an up but it could very well go down any moment especially with the current situation in the world so let's look at some pretty pictures of argentina let's flip through the book let me see if this is a good angle because it is an awkward one no let's move it down a little let me see there we go that's much better <laughs> top will still Argentina. Look at this. Gorgeous. All this European influenced architecture all throughout the country. Here's the Iquazu Falls. Isn't that cool to look at? There's a better picture coming up. Let's see. The mountains. Isn't that spectacular? Look at those peaks. So rugged looking. So like, like unnatural almost. We have a political map of Argentina. This is a Guarani man. It's one of the um, ethnic groups in the northern part of Argentina. We have Buenos Aires. You can see the big obelisk there. Very um, recognizable feature of the city. And we have some sheep because these books always have sheep in them. So this is in the, um, you can see the big hills and everything the southern ranching region of Argentina. Yeah, we've got some big, ooh, some big cool rocks out there. Isn't that beautiful? And a physical map of Argentina. Let's see if there's anything I want to point out. Oh, that's where the Cave of the Hands is located. That picture's coming up. That's the Rio de la Plata. And here's Equal. Can you imagine how that must sound? Look, this is all waterfall. That's so awesome. Here's um, the Andes Mountains. Very, very rocky. And this being Mount Aconcagua, the highest point in the Americas. Let's see, it's 22,834 feet or 6,960 meters. Very, very flat. 
they had some moo cows out on the pampas. Let's see, we have glaciers in, oh, in the far, far, far south. Let me move this. This is interesting. This is a town in Patagonia that um, it was flooded and let's see, it says in 2009 the water started to recede and you could see um, the underwater town. Oh, now you can see the underwater town. Dinosaurs. So lots and lots of dinosaur fossils have been found in Argentina. I think they talk about it later in this book, but the largest dinosaur ever found was found in Argentina, and I think they called it Argentinosaurus, I believe. Something like that. This is Tierra del Fuego. Very rugged. Very untouched. And this is one of the Antarctica bases that's owned by Argentina. Some ice. Isn't that wild looking? It's so neat. Let's see. Some parts of the cities. This is the National University of Cordoba, which is... Let me put this down so I can point. Cordoba's right there. And then this would be Mendoza, which can you see Mendoza on here? Yes, it's right there. More in the central part of the country. There's a big old toucan. I love toucans. They're so beautiful. They're so colorful. There's a Rhea, or Rhea? I think it's Rhea. Um, if you're watching this YouTube channel, the Urban Wildlife Rescue, I believe it's called, um, he has some rays and they're notorious. <laughs> the Andean condor, one of the biggest birds, like, I think the biggest flying bird, yeah, the largest flying land bird, a big guy. And Magellanic penguins, one of my favorite penguins, they're so cute. Oop, I gotta stop doing that, okay. Um, red knot birds, I think I talked about this in a video about, um, animal geography, how they have one of the longest migrations in the world. There's a beautiful capybara, one of the best animals, and a beautiful jaguar, a big cat. So apparently this was the work of beavers. <laughs> and here's a beautiful right whale. Some horses out in the forest. There's some pompous grass and the national tree, the sebo, really beautiful. My cat just got the zoomies. I hope he doesn't start running across the desk. Oh, no, yes, no, no, okay. <laughs> he tried and quit. National Park, so this is um, Nahuel Huapi National Park, the oldest national park in Argentina some fossils, and oh, here's the, that looks like a thigh, or a femur or something. The big dinosaur, here's the cave of the hands. Take a look, like how can you not see this and not feel something like, oh, that's so remarkable. Oh, that's incredible. Another one of the ethnic groups of Argentina, this is a Yaghan person. And let's look at some early European exploration. So we have um, Diaz de Solis in 1560, came up in here and was killed. Um, Magellan came around and found the Strait of Magellan. And then there was Sebastian Cabot, right? That was his name, yeah. That uh, came up through here. This is the re-establishment of Buenos Aires. Here's what the Viceroyalty of Rio de la Plata looked like when it was founded in 1776. And this is José de San Martín. He's basically like the George Washington equivalent of the Argentinian, Argentinian War of Independence. Some cauchos. Some really cool artwork of cowboys. Here he's chasing over you. And this is what the Federalist troops looked like during the Civil War. They wore red and wore these big hats. 
This is um, one of the coups I didn't mention was led by um, Justo José de Urquiza, one of the big battles against the current leader of Argentina at the time. This is the War of the Triple Alliance, which I talked about in my video on Paraguay, because it was Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay that went to war against Paraguay, which had devastating effects on Paraguay, but the Triple Alliance went out. This is an immigrant's hotel, it says. So it's space to hold the massive influx of Europeans moving to Argentina. And look at this beautiful old picture of Buenos Aires. It's so neat. I love old pictures of cities. This is soldiers celebrating Uribru overthrowing the government. And it says here this is an anti Peron um, gathering, it says, in 1955. There is Juan Perón and his wife, his first wife, um, who's more famously known in history as Evita. She was very beloved by the um, Argentinian public, and she um, passed away from cancer very, very young. But we'll talk more about her on another day this week. This is Isabel Perón, who became president after Juan Perón passed. This is a um, march of the um, grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo um, who are demanding to find out what happened to the disappeared. These are British troops on the Falkland Islands coming to take the islands back. Um, one of the presidents during the 90s, this is Carlos Menem, and a protest in 2001 over the economy. is the um, National Congress building. Very um, imposing looking. It's a big one, isn't it? Everyone voting. This is Cristina Fernandez um, de Kirchner, who was president, and the Senate, and the Supreme Court. Waving the flag up there. And a military march. It says on an Independence Day celebration. Um, Maurizio Macri, mayor of Buenos Aires in 2007. Here is the flag. I always like to read this part. So, the Argentine flag has three equal horizontal bands with light blue on the top and bottom and white in between. On the center of the white band is the Sun of May. A radiant yellow sun with a human face. It is a replica of the design of Argentina's first coin issued in 1813, recognizing the May Revolution. Flag Day occurs on June 20th, the day on which the designer of Argentina's flag, Manuel Belgrano, died. The Argentine motto is In Union and Liberty. Here's a map of Buenos Aires. You can see just how <laughs> boxy it is very European. And this is the Avenida Nuevo de Julio. Nueve. <laughs> and this is the Avenida Nueve de Julio. It says here it's um, the widest street in the world and I'd believe it. Look at it on the map. Like it's very big. A science teacher it says. Soybeans. And grapes. Um, Argentina has a huge wine industry. This is their money. They use the Argentina peso. It's a, a baker. <laughs> and car manufacturing. A resources map. So as you can see here, it's just covered in all kinds of different resources. Let's see. Oil drilling. And this is a protest against fracking, which, good for them, because fracking is absolutely devastating to the environment. There's some people living their lives. A population map, so you can really see how the population is centered right here. And around the major cities there, not so much as you go south. Uh, see some cool old guys here. Talks about how all elderly Argentines now have guaranteed pensions. These are Mapuche people, another 
ancient ethnic group of Argentina. They're sweet cows. Another ethnic group would be the Huichi people. And this is talking about how um, indigenous peoples, after the new constitution was made in 1994, how it um, grants them a lot of rights and protections. Let's see. A town in La Cumbrecita, which shows the German influence of, from the immigrants. It's really cute and quaint. Some Lebanese immigrants and some Chinese food on Chinese New Year. And many, many different people from all over the world live in Argentina. Let's see, this is talking about a, a Guarani school that teaches um, the Guarani language. And it's talking, I guess, talking about the Spanish language. A statue of Pachamama, one of the um, biggest, um, like, gods to be worshipped in the area. Give me the page. There we go. The coin that was talking about in the map, there's the son of May. So I, I put a note here, thankfully, because I totally forgot. So this is a picture of a mummy that was found. So if you're disturbed by, like, corpses or anything, look away until I say, because here we go. So this is the mummy of a 15 year old girl that was found like buried in the ice so she's kept in a museum like refrigerated so she's still um, preserved but she was apparently an Incan sacrifice and she's called La Doncella the maiden anyway you can look now if you needed to look away totally understand if you need to um, these are people at Mass. And there's Pope Francis, who was from Argentina. There's a movie called The Pope about how he became Pope. And it's it's um, it's an interesting movie because when I was watching it, I was like, this is really boring. But then after I finished it, I like kept thinking about it all the time. So it was clearly very good. Um, they do talk a bit about Argentina's history during the Dirty War during it as well. And... Um, how he was just like a very important figure after that event in Argentina. And the Cathedral de la Plata. Very beautiful. Don't worry, this is not an actual dead body, it's a statue. This is Deolinda Correa, who was a woman that was found dead on the side of the road, but her baby was still suckling from her. So she was considered like a, a miracle and um, people will leave offerings by like statues of her. And this is an offering for um, Gauchito Gil, who was basically like a Robin Hood figure. Statue on the mountains. This is the um, Christ the Redeemer of the Andes, basically, where um, the border of Chile and Argentina meet. We have some Mormons over here and a very beautiful um, a mosque, it says, the Islamic Cultural Center. Oop. Of course, soccer is a big part, or football, I should say. Lionel Messi, one of the, one of the probably the greatest football players ever. And Walter Herman played in the NBA. This is foot golf, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then this sport is called, what was it called? Pato, which is like um, basketball on horses. So basically like polo, but with basketball rules. Pantonion, an accordion for tango music, it says. And that's what the tango dance looks like. Oh, very Argentinian. Like the best known cultural thing to come out of Argentina is the tango. Let's see, this is Mercedes Sosa who was a folk singer during the 1970s, Alberto Ginastera, a composer, Jorge Luis Borges, one of the most famous authors of the modern age. This is apparently a show called Violeta. And Nobel Prizes, let's see, this is Adolfo Perez Esquivel, 
was honored for his work in human rights in Argentina. Though he trained as a sculptor and architect, he gave that up to work with nonviolent organizations in Latin America. He helped persuade the United Nations to establish the Human Rights Commission. Very cool. Looks like they're leaving school for the day. <laughs> Working on our film class. This talks about how in Argentina they don't have the tooth fairy, they have the tooth mouse. The University of Buenos Aires. Having a good meal. <laughs> Having some carne um, asada. Delicious. And yerba mate, which is pretty much like a, a tea. It's the best way to describe it. Locro, which is like a big meaty potato still. Looks amazing. Some media lunas, half moons. Looks like a little mini croissant. Looks delicious. Let's see. A waiter race, it says up there. This guy's making some salads. And then, of course, quinoa being like, at least where I live, it's like the number one grain that's in like everything now, it seems. It's really popular. This guy is hard at work. This guy is talking on the phone. <laughs> also, probably very hard at work doing something. They're not hard at work, they're enjoying a drink. This kid's out at a festival, looking pretty sharp. I think this is the last page, yeah. So that's it for tonight. Ooh, look at this guy climbing on the glacier. It's pretty perilous. That's it for Argentina for tonight. I have many, many more Argentina videos coming for you. Almost like a week of Argentina content for you. So if you want to check that out, subscribe if you haven't already. And like I said, I will be reading from this book on my Patreon, so feel free to join if you want. There's also my channel membership, which is the only place you can hear my history podcast, where you can actually request topics for me to talk about, and I'll do like a 10 to 20 minute podcast episode about it. So um, that's only 99 cents a month if you want to listen to that. And is pretty much it for me tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night.